So you want to know how to build your own DIY desk PC? Well, for you long-term subscribers, you know that this is actually a project that I did starting about six months ago and have only recently wrapped up with a more recent update. So if you want to see the full project series, the full, I think, eight videos, then feel free to take a look at the cards up above or the links in the description down below for the full project. But this is going to be a sort of condensed wrap-up video of exactly how I went through building my own desk PC and making it a bit more, less of a project and more of a how-to video. So I hope you enjoy it. I want to make it clear that I am in no way an expert on really any of this, especially in carpentry. I really, uh, I think I did a course, you know, I, I took woodworking in secondary school and that was about it. So uh, hopefully you guys can learn from some of my mistakes uh, and hopefully I'll be able to point out some of the specific things that I really recommend you do or don't do in this sort of project. So hopefully this video can be helpful to you. Uh, basically the plan is that um, we're going to be putting the PC roughly in this section. There's a support beam that runs across uh, underneath that runs around about sort of this area. So that's kind of our hard limit for how far down we can go, which is fine anyway. Um, and in terms of width, I think I'm basically gonna go for about 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So I didn't plan this all that well. I didn't realize that uh, the base would be so close to the edge of the desk. And I really do recommend that you leave a lot of space for your rear IO and your fans as well to be able to even install them properly. Uh, but once you do plan it all out, then head to your local uh, you know, hardware store or whatever and pick up a fairly large sheet of wood. Now I picked up obviously the sheet that you can see here uh, and I actually got a and q to cut it for me at least to uh, basically the wrong sizes as I added it up wrong. So I do recommend that you ask them to cut it to the correct size and also pick up any extra tools you need like screws, drill bits, sandpaper and paint. Uh, and if you are specifically in the UK uh, with B&Q they will cut the wood for free which is very nice. Also had a lot of fun trying to get the wood into my car so this was quite a, quite a fun thing. And now for the maths. Equals, apparently, 32.01562 dot dot dot. After working at the sloping edge, I went to get my piece of glass that's custom fit. Now this one actually only cost £25, including the polishing, uh, cleaning and uh, cutting the uh, actual piece to perfect size. So that's really awesome. This was a, a local firm as well, which is always nice to sort of support local businesses and stuff. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to be able to show you what goes into cutting a single piece of glass to size and basically polishing it and cleaning it and that sort of thing, um, which is actually a fairly simple process. You strike it off, as you can see, and then you just snap it. It's very simple. It looks so fragile when you can just snap it like that, but um, it was quite cool to see. This is the edge polishing machine. It basically uh, goes through uh, and uses uh, air pressure and motors with sort of lubricating fluid to bevel and clean off the edge. So if you've got any notches or anything that's kind of dented into the glass or any chips taken out, this will uh, basically take off a millimeter uh, per time it goes through, uh, which is actually pretty cool. It looks awesome. Um, is quite loud, uh, but otherwise is uh, is cool to see the sort of beveled edge, uh, which you can see here, um, is sort of corners, uh, and obviously you do that on all four sides to get a very nice uh, appeal. They also put it through the washing machine, which basically just you know rolls the glass through, sprays it with a lot of soapy water, and gives it a bit of a rub, and then uh, a massive dryer uh, that dries it ridiculously quickly, and then pushes it out very very clean on the other side, which is awesome. Next up was the cutting and drilling. This was relatively easy to do. Just make sure that you get a fairly decent jigsaw or a rotary saw, especially if you can get people to help you. It's a massive help to, to be able to make it a lot easier. So I really do uh, recommend that. But otherwise, it is just a case of cutting out all the panels that you need uh, to fit what sort of uh, specification you fancy. Of course, it's very much up to you what you want to do. If you want to have a sloping edge, you just want to have a hanging box or you want to have all of the edges sloping and the sizing and all that sort of stuff is completely up to you. But note that you will be doing a lot of sanding. The construction of the box is pretty easy. I was countersinking all of the screws as I, as I went so that they were fairly flush. The sloping edge was a little bit difficult and I didn't really do it all that well, but uh, this is kind of the end result, uh, which ended up being not too bad. There is quite a few holes in the overall sizing. And also don't forget to cut out the sides as well uh, as that is fairly important.
Next up was the hole in the table. This was fairly simple to do, just make sure that it's the right size and especially make sure that it's as square as you can possibly make it. And of course, make sure that you leave a hole on one of the sides to be able to lift up the glass. This one was technically a mistake, but I made use of it. And I also recommend sanding and then painting the edges so that it matches the color uh, and just generally it makes a pretty big difference. Next up was installing the power supply and since this is just gonna be sitting on its side, I basically just used these two small wood chips and a hole in the back to make use of the power supply to really hold it in place. There really doesn't need to be too much more for this one. I also sanded the hole on the table down and then eventually did go and paint it as well. Uh, and I want to make a point that uh, I'm currently making the false floor that I used for actually, you know, uh, installing the motherboard onto and sort of hiding the cables. My personal recommendation here is just to cut a big section out of your actual case sort of box that you can see here on the back and then use an old or a cheap PC case, uh, sort of strip all the rivets apart so that you just have the motherboard tray and the rear I.O. section, so the, where the graphics card and where the motherboards actually stick out the back uh, and then just use that, paint it to what color you want and install that inside this of chassis as you can see here the rear io and the graphics card io slots really aren't that great there's only one way to install one graphics card here which is you know, removing the motherboard and the motherboard isn't really all that secure in here so my personal recommendation would be to just get a, a cheap case uh, sort of remove all the parts except for the motherboard tray and the rear io and then install that one instead as it would be much much easier but this was my personal final result and the, the main tools of my trade here now to install the glass i used basically just a whole load of screws along the edges i did try and keep it nice and level although it was mostly done by eye and hand so it wasn't perfect but nonetheless it does sit very nicely and while the table isn't perfect it does fit quite well. So as you can see, I actually spray painted the chassis. I technically ran out of paint a little bit on some of the edges, so it's not a perfect coat, but especially considering that it's mostly, well, I leave the RGB lights off, so it's mostly dark inside, so it just looks pretty stealthy and sexy. I then went installing the components, which I suppose I'll just do a sort of time-lapse montage of and some nice music for you. Once all the components were installed, of course, RGB was the next thing, and I just, I'm really, really proud of how this turned out. It looks really beautiful, I especially love the graphics card and the way that it's positioned. Uh, the AIO cooler wasn't really that great, it was fairly loud, especially pump noise, which made it quite difficult to be working on this desk, so actually in a sort of update video, I ended up uh, actually removing that cooler, switching it out for a Cooler Master Neptune 120 XL, and then in a future update, I then also went on to switch out the motherboard and the graphics card.
card for a Ryzen 7 1700X and uh, still a GTX 1080, but uh, in that case it was actually a ASUS Strix 1080 with the newer, faster uh, 11 gigabits per second memory. So either way, I am really happy with how this turned out. This was the, the process for changing to the Corsair ML120 fan and the Coolmaster Neptune 120XL and also adding my editing hard drive in as my normal editing PC actually I ended up uh, just having a fit and dying and obviously this is the update for the uh, newer motherboard, uh, new CPU and newer version of basically the same graphics card. So there you have it, if you followed along the relatively simple yet seemingly inconceivably difficult steps to get to this point then congratulations, you now have your own DIY desk PC. Now I want to make it clear the reason why this is called budget DIY desk PC isn't because of the hardware that I put in, obviously the hardware that I put in and the hardware that I've upgraded to are still pretty expensive but the budget part comes from the actual desk itself as the desk only cost, I think the actual desk itself only cost me about £30 from Ikea or a uh, second hand from someone who bought it from Ikea. Uh, the glass cost about £25 and in total the wood and tools only cost me about £50 to £100. So you're talking the price of a relatively nice even tempered glass case versus having a desk PC and that's including most of the tools, screws and stuff like that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful and informative. If you did then feel free to let me know in the comments down below and also do let me know if you've got any other ideas or projects that I should take a look at. I've got a few ideas myself that I really want to make happen and I'm trying to make them happen so if they do happen make sure you're subscribed so that you can see those project videos and all that sort of stuff and also feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well. If you do end up making your own DIY desk PC thanks to this or any other video then feel free to let me know uh, on Twitter and Facebook as well feel free to send me a photo there I'd love to see what you can make probably better than me actually and otherwise uh, yeah I guess that's kind of that. If you haven't seen the full series already especially if you do want to make your own then check the cards up above and the links in the description down below and if you want to support me then feel free to take a look at the parts that I use or the general Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links that are in the description down below as well as the merchandise link for Tector Movie or just generally funny sort of uh, hoodies and t-shirts and stuff like that and uh, yeah I'll leave some other videos over here for you the subscribe button over this side and otherwise we'll see you all in the next video.